What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut, and this is my 2020 Toro Super Recycler Model 21386. Now you guys know I met and had a date with one of these at the GIE Expo, and that's all it took for me. The day after GIE, I actually emailed my contacts at Toro and said, you guys gotta send one of these out to my dealer right away. Now this video is not sponsored. I bought this mower because I wanted it, and because in that way I can use, abuse, and review it any way I want going forward. Now all that being said, this isn't gonna be a review of the Toro Super Recycler, because this is exactly like the one that I have already. The only difference is the engine, and we'll go into that. Other than that, everything is the same. It cuts the same. It's a joy to use. It is one of the best walk-behind mowers you can get. And as far as I'm concerned, the cut quality is superior to anything else I've used. What I'm saying is, is they didn't mess it up. All they did was change the color. But there are a couple options that you may want to consider if you're going to pick one of these up. So let's go through some basics now. Now I don't want to spend too much time on this, but in the interest of being thorough, I just want to show you why I selected the model number that I did. This is my third Super Recycler, and the previous two that I had were both what I would call base models, or entry level models, because I usually don't go for the extra features. So in this case, I had two choices of what I would call base models. You have this one here, the 21385 for $549.99, and then you have the one that I have, the 21386, also for $549.99. I just want to point out that the base model also can get a Honda engine, and that's $649. 999 model 21382. It's very similar to these other two models here, except it does have the Honda engine. But back to the two base models, both of 549.99. This is the 21385. This has the Toro branded engine on it. Now you'll see here in the black scheme, that's kind of cool. It does keep with the black color scheme. One of the nice features you do get with this particular model here though is two point height adjustment. Now let me illustrate what two point height adjustment is by showing you on my Time Master. So here's my 2017, and one of the complaints I've always had, and it's really just an annoyance, it doesn't affect the performance at all, is though that it's not easy to adjust the height. You have to literally do it across four wheels, and it's not the smoothest working mechanism. Now it is there. Going down is easy, of course, but coming back up, that's where you gotta, you know, you gotta, sometimes you gotta fight with it a little bit. Now the Time Master has the two-point adjustment. You'll see that there is an adjustment for height here, but not there, and there's adjustment for height here, but not there. So that's the two. That's what two-point height of adjustment looks like when you pull this one down. It takes the entire front down. So back to the 2020 model here on the 21385. You can see here under features it says right here, customize your cut two-point height of cut. You can easily adjust the deck height at two points for quick customization of your mowing height. That's important to me because I mow Zoysia at two inches and then I go up to St. Augustine at 4.25. However, the images here on the website, I can still see four height adjustment points. So I just don't know if this model picture here is not correct or if I'm not looking at something right. But either way, besides the difference in the engine, that's the only discernible difference that I can find in this model and the one that I have. So now let's go to the model I have in my garage, which is the 21386, and I'll tell you why I chose this one. This 21386 is exactly like the one we just looked at, the difference being this has a Briggs & Stratton engine. It does not have the two-point height adjustment for the deck. But one thing that it does have, and the main reason I chose this one, is it has the Smart Stow feature. And since it saves me so much room, now I can buy a couple more mowers and fit them in my garage here. So while I do have to still manually adjust all four wheels when I go from my Zoysia to my St. Aug, but I'm okay with that because this model has something that my current Super Recycler does not have that I definitely need as my collection grows. One other feature of this Briggs & Stratton engine is they claim no oil changes ever. All you have to do is just top it off when it's low. So you just check it every other mow or so, and if it's a little low, you just put in a little extra, and then you're good to go. For me though, I'm not old school in most things, but 
I'm gonna change oil just because it's like a thing. It's like a rite of passage. It's a, it's like an every year you change the oil. And even though this won't get as many hours because I have so many other mowers to choose from, I still change the oil in my mower once a year, even if it says you don't have to. But if that's something that's a convenience feature for you, if you're somebody, if you're somebody that doesn't want to learn how to change the oil or even mess with that then this would be a feature that you might want to consider. Far be it from me to go against the manufacturer, I'm just telling you what I do. But again, if that's something that appeals to you, you might want to consider this particular motor with the no oil change. And of course, however it's configured allows it to stand on end like this. If you did this with other mowers, I'm pretty sure they would flood out and things like that. Doesn't look like anything's changed when it comes to the height adjustment. Even looks like they're using very similar tires. Of course, the rims on the new one are black and the rims on mine here are gray. Another thing of note, this badging here, this is actually stamped into the metal. Whereas this is a sticker and you can see it's bubbling. So that's nice to see the little extra touch there. Looks good too. The other thing you'll notice is the traditional one looks traditional. It just, it looks pedestrian. It, it just, it looks like a lawnmower with a traditional white bagger, which I don't use often, but I put it on there just so you guys could see because, because they are doing a good job keeping with the theming here and keeping the bag black to match the rest of the mower. And I'll say this again, I really like the red accents. I like the way those have been done. I think they're tasteful and they keep the Toro colors because everybody loves the Toro red. But again, they also give you that murdered out black color that just really makes this mower pop. So let's just get a quick look underneath. You can see here on the left, this is my 2020 Super Recycler and on the right is my 2017. And just so you know, these are what make it the Super Recycler. Are these coupled with the wings on this piece here? Something to do with these wedges and this keeps the clippings up underneath the deck longer, which is allows them to get cut up more, which makes this the Super Recycler. And everything underneath here is exactly the same. Interestingly enough, they do keep some nice details here and you can see this continues with the red accents as well as the wedges do, whereas on my previous model that's just all black. The deck underneath also continues with the black even though that's all scarred up with grass stains already, but still pretty neat though that they continue with that color scheme. Even here you'll see on this piece here, which is, I don't know, just some sort of guard or something, but they keep that and that nice red to give that accent. All right, the last little comparison I wanted to do was the sound of the engine. Now, I don't know anything about engine tuning or any of that kind of stuff, but to me, there is a specific sound that a Toro Super Recycler makes. And I wanted to see if this Briggs & Stratton engine sounded the same. So here are a few passes with each one. Both are warmed up and I'm not actually cutting grass here. This grass has already been cut. This is just so you can hear them. You guys let me know below if you can hear a difference or not. At the end of the day though, my thought is that most of you that buy this aren't really gonna care much about all of these options. You're really gonna buy it for the color scheme that you like, and I think it's gonna come down to do you like the red engine or do you want the all black engine to keep that black color scheme going? You guys can comment below and let me know which you like better. I actually do prefer the all black, but again, I wanted that smart stow because I have so many mowers here. That was really important to me. And again, I do like the Briggs & Stratton name. So I'll be interested to see what you guys think below as far as all that goes. And if you're gonna be getting one of these, they are available now. Once again, I do wanna reiterate, this video is not sponsored and I will now prove that.